Shalom. Shalom to the elect of Israel. Uh, let's begin this lesson by giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our King, our Redeemer, our, our Hero, our Big Brother, the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the beginning and the ending, the Alpha and the Omega. Our big brother, Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> and let's give double honors to our head apostles, the bishop, the elders that taught us this truth. And uh, salutation, peace to all the brothers out there doing this work in sincerity and in truth, comforting the uh, uh, the sheep of Yahweh Shai. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, African-American, Native American, known as the hopeful elect of Israel. That's right, picked before the foundation of this earth. This man out there day in and day out feeding you, making sure that you're preparing your mind for what is coming because the Lord is forcing the hands of what? These men, the Lord is the one that is ruling in the kingdom of heaven. They are actually hurry for me. The Lord is pushing them to destroy themselves. Eh? That's right. That's what you are witnessing right now. Again, all praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rekwakudash. And family, when it's all said and done, I hope this message here, it comforts you. And that you have nothing to worry about. Everything the Lord says is going to be happening, it is happening. Yes, family, our Passover is coming. That's right. We, we hope that this is the last Passover. Hmm? We hoping. As our beloved apostle Toha coined 2024 to be the hopeful, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And family, the Lord didn't disappoint. 2024 opened with what? That's why it opened with what? Seven point, I think 7.5 earthquake in Japan. And family, it hasn't stopped. Escalation, 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 escalation. And that's what is happening right now. Because what? It's leading to the second coming of our king, our redeemer, Yahweh Shai. The moment America and the West Force found the third world war is at the door. And we're going to bring it out. Mm? We're going to bring it out. Nuclear war is coming. And we are extremely excited. Again, if I didn't say it, shall I warm to the elect? Mm? Or we start with 144,000. That's right. Under Yahweh Shai. These are the tabernacle of David. And he's been built right in front of Esau, Edom. And he cannot see it. But that's okay. That's exactly how the Lord wants it. As he brings one kingdom down, he set up another. All praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, family. This is our friend, eh? George Galloway. Hmm? I think this guy is a Jake. That's just me speaking as a man. But he has a spirit of Jake. Hmm? Like I said, Israel is going to come looking like all nation. Okay? They're going to come looking like all nation. So, we could, this is his monologue today. We're going to pick it up. Yeah, I think I already set it up. We're going we're gonna to let him speak for a bit. And he said a lot of stuff here. Mm, he said a lot. He saw the West is being family, is being put on a blast before the Lord judged the nations. That's why right. Esau eat them. Because Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Right? You see, this movie, this movie, this thing that we call life is a movie between two characters. One is Esau, one is Jacob. Mm? And Jacob is what? The progenitor of the 12th tribe. And Esau is what? The progenitor of what? The Edomite race. Today they call themselves Europeans, Caucasians, you know, white, you know, which is a social construct. You see, these are the names that they've given to themselves. But their biblical name is what? Esau. And Esau's name was changed to what? Edom. They are the Edomites, the one ruling. That's why Yahweh Shai says when he come, Isaiah 63. And read that chapter. It's a beautiful chapter. He's coming to visit what? Edom. That's why right. Esau, Edom. But family, enough of the talking. Let's go here. Let's allow George to speak. This is today's monologue. Family, it was fire. Hmm? We're going to let him speak. And as you can see, Netanyahu is back at Biden. Oh, we have few things to cover. Oh, yeah. Netanyahu, in case you don't know, he's the prime minister of what? Israel. He's been in an office, in and out, in and out, in and out. But family, he said, the least of the flock shall draw them out. Eh? The least of the flock. Eh? He says, what? There's not the dog. He said, the tail wagging the dog. The dog wagging the tail. Family, you get the point. Eh? The least of the flock. And eh? we're going to bring it up. But let's allow George to speak. Let's go. Bunkers, Baerbock, the unhinged green foreign minister of the ailing Federal Republic of Germany, 
actually issued a Ramadan message this evening. In oh, which one second. So he had George Galloway, in case you, you don't know who George Galloway is. Family, he's been in uh, the British Parliament for many years. Family, he was voted out. I think I can't remember when he left office, but he just got voted back in. Okay, he had many, many shows. At one point, he was on RT for a bit, and now he had his own show called Mother's Mother of All Talk Show. Okay, this M O A T S, Mother of All Talk, talk. Mother of All Talk Shows. Okay, that's what it stands for, Moats. All right, and he's on uh, on air every Wednesday and every Sunday. So let him speak. All right. She said that she was heartfelt, sending a signal to all those in Gaza suffering from Hamas terrorism. It is unbelievable the tone deafness of these Western politicians. They imagine that the 112,000 people who are either dead, maimed, mutilated, or buried under the rubble inside Gaza are the victims of Hamas rather than the victims of their ally Israel with their full support, economic support, political support, cultural support in the Eurovision Song Contest, military support with weapons and intelligence overflights and all the rest. They really seem to believe that, that anybody in the entire Muslim world wants to hear a Ramadan message from the foreign minister of Germany blaming Hamas for 112,000 murdered and mutilated Muslim people. I'll tell you what, Germany, get rid of this woman. She's making your country a laughing stock as well as an economic basket case. Germany, the powerhouse of Europe, is now the sick man of Europe as a result of following the orders of senile butcher genocide Joe Biden, to whom I now turn. Joe Biden, who could with a single phone call tell Israel to open the gates and allow thousands upon thousands of fully laden trucks full of aid, some of it now spoiling. It's been standing out in the Sinai desert for so long. He could phone Netanyahu and tell him, open the gates or there won't be another dollar. There won't be another dime. There won't be another bomb, another gun, another shell, another air force, another piece of diplomatic maneuvering on your behalf in the United Nations. Open the gates now. No, Joe Biden thinks that anyone's going to buy his solution that a thousand American soldiers go to the Gaza Strip. What could possibly go wrong, Joe? What could possibly happen to your thousand soldiers? If the Israelis don't kill them, the Palestinian resistance will kill them. A thousand American soldiers to the Gaza Strip, a raging war zone, to do what? To build a harbor, which will take six to eight weeks, they say, so that they could sail aid directly into the Gaza Strip. Why didn't anybody think of that? It could have been done any day, sending barges from the ships onto the beach. We don't need a harbor. And anyway, maybe you've got an ulterior motive for your harbor, genocide Joe. Maybe you want to build that harbor so you can steal the oil and gas in the sea of Gaza, which belongs to the Palestinian Authority. Maybe you want to do in Gaza what you are already doing in Syria, in the parts of Syria that you remain in illegal occupation of, looting them of their oil in great profusion. The Pope has told Zelensky it's time to hoist the white flag. Q outrage amongst the NAFO brigade all over the world. But what His Holiness is saying is enough, is enough. Ukraine has lost this war. Hundreds of thousands of people have lost their lives in this war. Hundreds of billions of euros and dollars 
have been wasted on this war. And the only result of continuing to fight it is that more and more Ukrainian territory will be lost. More and more millions of Ukrainian citizens will fly to other countries as refugees and settle there. Not much liked, they will come to be amongst the public that they have been dropped in amongst. Trust me on that and remember you heard it here. All the Pope is saying is enough is enough. Who will doubt it? Who is going to call for the continuation of the fight to the last drop of Ukrainian blood? Has enough Ukrainian blood not already been shed in a losing cause, in a war that need never have happened, should never have happened, in a war that was provoked not by the Ukrainians themselves, but by their NATO masters. Washington declared the war over the dead bodies of Ukrainians, a proxy war against Russia, and they were open about their war aims. They wanted to regime change Moscow. They wanted to break Russia up into what they call its constituent parts. Not one Russia, but a balkanized Russia. Dozens of Russias, little statelets that they could maneuver and conspire within, turning one against the other, having all build a state, an army, an air force, having all build all the paraphernalia of antagonistic states. They didn't hide it. That was their intention. And the fact that they didn't hide it is the principal reason why Russia has prevailed. If you tell a country that you intend to break it up, that you intend to pick its government, that you intend to redraw its borders, that you intend to feast upon the dripping roast of its economy, what can that country do but fight back? They underestimated Russia. They underestimated President Putin. They underestimated, above all, the Russian national unity that has now prevailed to the extent that the Pope is calling for Zelensky to hoist the white flag. I've never seen such a tidal wave of anti-Catholic guff in my life on social media as that that has followed His Holiness's call today. Maybe he could have put it better. Maybe he could have avoided the illusion of the white flag, but the essence of his message is surely clear and unanswerable. The longer this is stalled, the worse will be the outcome for the remaining rump Ukrainian state. Meanwhile, little Macron threatened Russia this week that an advance on Kiev or Odessa would bring French troops into the war. Well, I thought he was a historian, Macron, but he obviously has forgotten what happened the last time French forces poured into and across the Russian steppe. Napoleon beat his retreat from Moscow, a bedraggled and defeated figure. The idea that the French society, riven from head to foot, most of them, 75% of them, against their pretender, their Dauphin, little Macron, are going to fight Russia for Ukraine, for Odessa, was always a non-starter. And quickly, the French armed forces made it clear that no such thing would be happening. But the fact that these raving fantasists in the chanceries of Europe, in the presidencies, in the prime ministerships of Europe are still entertaining in the face of all the facts that they can intervene in this proxy war directly and not suffer a total defeat. I've only got one word to say to you and that is Oppenheimer. Take it in, hear what I'm saying. By definition, 
If Russia is facing an existential threat, it will use every weapon in its armory. And if there are no red lines for Macron, there will be no red lines for Moscow. It's obvious. Oppenheimer's going to win all the Oscars. Quite right. Great film. But nobody seems to have calculated that the nuclear weapons Russia would land on Paris are 1,000 times more powerful than that monstrosity you see on the screen behind me that was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You want that? You want some, Mr. Macron? Well, the French people don't. And they need to rise up and tell their president so. The rest of the leaders in Europe, Schultz, who's committed acts of self-harm against his own people, against his own economy. Macron and little Rishi Sunak, about whom more later, who couldn't fight his way out of a wet paper bag, who's never heard a gun fired in anger unless on the grouse moors if they allow people like him to come hunting with them on the <coughs> grouse moors. Somebody'd ask him for a gin and tonic. Trust me on that. Little Rishi Sunak, little Grant Sharps or Grant Green or whatever he's calling himself today amongst his multiple aliases. Britain is a country whose flagship aircraft carrier caught fire again this weekend that has a fleet of warships that crash into each other in the Solent, that can't join the war games for NATO, that can't send their commitment to the Red Sea because their ships ain't up to it. Britain's a country with an army that could fit into Villa Park, the home of Aston Villa, where they got humped by Tottenham Hotspur today. These fantasists, these gnats, these fleas threatening an elephant, of course are only doing what Mussolini did. It was said of Mussolini that he went around the world threatening people with Germany's army. That's what little Grant Green is doing. It's what little Macron is doing. It's what little soldier Schultz is doing. They're threatening people with America's army. But the Americans don't want war either. That's the meaning of the virtually total collapse of the presidency of genocide Joe Biden, who, quite apart from all his other failings, which include, of course, his failings of actual cognition of actually knowing where he is, what year it is, what flavor of ice cream he is eating, where the toilet is, and why you should go to it when you need rather than after you've done it in your pants. This man is the leader to whom Macron, Schultz, Sunak are bowing and scraping when he's not fit to be sent out for a loaf from the even tied home that he should be spending these last years in the twilight of his life in. And the American people ain't wearing it. Joe Biden's ratings have fallen to the low ever recorded by any president in office seeking re-election in all history. And his opponent is half mad himself. Donald Trump. I mean, it's not as if he's facing some insurgent Bill Clinton or Jack Kennedy. He's facing Donald Trump and he's facing the mother of all humiliating defeats. Unless, of course, they arrest Donald Trump before he gets to the starting gate. Unless, God forbid, they kill Donald Trump before he gets to the starting gate. The Democrats made a very big mistake in not moving Joe Biden out and bringing 
some kind of all right family we'll leave it there you see in the end of this kingdom that's it it is over but let's before we do that family we gotta we thank the lord all praises honor glory to the power of abraham isaac and jacob Yahweh Bahashem. You see, when Yahweh Shai said he's going to be with us to the end of days, he wasn't lying. But before we get there, I'll probably get it. Matthew 28, the last verse there. But here, let's give thanksgiving express. This is Isaiah 12, starting from verse 1. And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord Yahweh, I will praise thee. Though thou was angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou, eh, and thou comfortest me. That's how we're feeling right now in this last days. Because family, from here is the kingdom. Barakata Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. We pray that we are among the numbers. It said, Behold, eh? the power is my salvation. Yahweh, I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Yahweh eh? is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Eh? He says, therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the walls of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord Yahweh. Call upon his name. Declare what? Declare what? Declare what? Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Yahweh. Yahweh Shai. That's why it's a day that make mention of the Lord. Eh? Isaiah 62. It says, hold not thy peace until what? Until he established Jerusalem on this planet. I will get it. Family, I don't want to butcher it. But let's continue here. It says here, therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say praise the Lord Yahweh call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. And because we are exalting the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, we're telling the whole world that it is our power that is orchestrating all this chaos. And he's about to introduce our king, Yahweh Shai, to the entire world. He says, all I shall see him. And he says, sing unto the Lord Yahweh, for he have done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. Eh? For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. The Lord is in the midst of thee. Eh? Family, the Lord is here with us. Because Yahweh Shai said what? Let's go to the book of Matthew quickly. Matthew 28, the last verse. It says here, what did the Lord say? Let's highlight it so you know that it is our King Yahweh Shai that is speaking. He said, teaching them to observe all things, including everything that is happening. He said, we should be occupied with what? Prophecy. Eh? All things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. Eh? Always, even unto the end of the world. Because he's what? He sent the Holy Spirit, which is guiding us, teaching us, able to put these lessons together. Eh? He is the word. The word that I speak to you, the our spirit and life. Family, our king comes in the volume of the book. From Genesis all the way down to what? Revelation. He is all about our king, Yahweh Shai. Eh? That's why we honor him. Before I said it, family, I said I wasn't going to try and butcher it because it's a powerful powerful verse let's go quickly to the book of isaiah chapter 62 and eh? let's give honor and glory it says, verse 8 i believe it says the lord have sworn is it no 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 no. i think isaiah 62 uh no no, no. it says here verse 6 i have set a watchman upon thy walls a watchman are what the servants of the lord the mouthpiece of the lord oh jerusalem we shall never hold what? Their peace. Day nor night. Yea, that make mention of the Lord. Who's doing that? The men of the Lord. Eh? That's why we're calling on the Lord. This is how we make him mention. We're giving him honor and glory for what he's doing on this planet here. Comforting the elect. Telling you that your king is coming. Yahweh Shai. It's all about the elect. It's not for everybody. Mm -mm. The king is coming. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace, day nor night. Yea, that make mention of the Lord. Keep not what? Silence. We are not going to keep our mouth shut. Family, I got another video to show you. This one just dropped. I watched a bit of it, but uh, where was it? Where was it? Uh, this was uh, from the New York. Uh, please bear with me. Where was it? Uh, but before we do that, I just want to put this in the queue. Let me see. What was it? What was it? What was it? Uh, let me see here. 
Oh yeah, right here. What's going on, guys? But one second here. Let's hold that first. Let's hold that first. Let's get this article, family. Let's get this article here. And we're going to bring it out. Um, where was it? Yes. So what did the Lord say? And it says, what the least of the flock shall draw them out. Netanyahu said the hell with Biden, the hell with America. Eh? Meanwhile, it's America that is supplying them the, with, the, with the weapon that they need to destroy Gaza. Eh? That's why family genocide is going on and nobody's talking about it. Eh? Because what? This is prophecy. This is prophecy. It said the least of the flock. Eh? It says what? It's not the dog wagging. The, the tail is wagging the dog. It's the least of the flock. Actually, before we do that, let's find out the definition. It said the tail wagging the dog. Eh? It's an what? Idiom that usually refers to something important or powerful being controlled. Listen to this. Something powerful being controlled by something less. So its earliest use is in the what, 1858 play, Our American Cousin. Hmm? Something here, but here's the point. Something important or powerful being controlled by something less. So... So what does that tell you? Who is being controlled here? Hmm? America, something important and powerful being controlled by what? That's right, Israel. Because at the end of the day, this prophecy has to be fulfilled. Family, we are all about proving everything that we say. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah 49 verse 20. Where is it? 49, Jeremiah 49 verse 20. And the Lord says what? Mm, family, there's no power like the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, but Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. He says, therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord and eh? his advice, his decree. He says here that he have taken against Edom and his purpose, and eh? that he have purpose against the inhabitants of Teman. Teman is what? Grandson of Esau, the same nation, family, that's right. Modern day Timans are what? The Germans. And he said, surely the least of the flock. Family, what did, what, what did the, the, the dog, the tail wagging the dog? What does that mean? That's right, the least. And the least is what? Israel says, the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations. When you look up the habitation, what is habitation? Let's look up the word habitation. Mm? Inhabitants. No, let's go. The hab Is it? Habitation, and eh? let's look it up. The Hebrew word is what? Uh, Navi, right? Strong's H, 5116. Navi. Uh, Navi. 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 Abode. Habitation, abode of shepherds of flock, pasture, and uh, meadow, habitation. That's where you live. But the Lord is saying what? The Lord says what? That's right. The Lord says what? He says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate. I forgot to look up the word desolate. Let's look up the word desolate. Mm -hmm. The word desolate is what? Shomami. Eh? Strong's age, 8074. Shamaim. Shamaim. To be desolate, be appalled, stunned, stupefied. That's how they're going to turn America. Because eventually, guess what? Family, the Lord says what? Russia, Ezekiel 38 has to be fulfilled. But first, this nation, Israel, have to draw America in. And everybody's going to get involved. And that's called Third World War. But when it's all said and done, this is what's going to happen to America eh? and Israel. To be desolate, be appalled, stunned, stupefied. And... Eh? You see, all struck, mm? horror, cause appalling. Family, you get the point. It's not going to be the Garden of Eden when it's all said and done. No, it's not. But no, let, now let's get the article. Let's read a bit here. And then we're going to play this video. And I think I have another article. Do I have another article? I think that's it. But let's continue. It says here, the Israeli leader has vowed to assault the Palestinian city of Rafa. Family, these people have no defense. Mm -hmm. Rafa, I think, was a, a population, a point, I think it was a population of less than 300,000. But now they have 1.2 million plus living there. No military family, yes. It's genocide. 
That's what is happening right now. He says here, the Israeli leader has vowed to assault the Palestinian city of Rafah against the direct wishes of the U.S. president. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has claimed that his maximalist war aims are supported by what? The overwhelming majority of his citizens. Although the whole world is against these people here, but family prophecy have to be fulfilled. We don't have any horses in this race. But family, we have a heart. We have compassionate people. But family, this is the lost movie. That's why you got to take your feelings right out of it. Eh? This Lord is showing, family, he's putting Esau on the blast right now. Everybody's going to know that the destroyer, they're going to know who is who the destroyer of the earth is. They shave their face, they put on a nice suit and tie, and everybody thought that, yeah, these people are very smart, very benevolent, they are pure, yeah, they can do no wrong. No, family, don't let that fool you. Underneath all that, that's why the Lord created them to be the wicked. Their blessing was the sword. Isaac blessed Esau with the sword. It says, by thy sword thou shalt live. And the Lord says in the book of Isaiah, not Isaiah, and it's at the book of uh, Revelation 6, 4, that he gave them the sword to take peace from the earth. So what they are doing is they are fulfilling the will of the Lord. And the Lord is coming to judge them. That's right. He is coming to remove them. And they are the only nation that the Lord is going to have no mercy upon. After a thousand years of captivity, that is what is waiting in store for them. So yeah. The war that's going on right now, nobody's going to turn Gaza and Israel into some hostel, to some hotel. They're going to be digging the oil and they're going to be taking gas. No, 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 no. This is the end. It's about to be level. We're following what is written in the Bible. That's right. It's going to be level. Only Jerusalem and America. But America is going to be a desert and Israel is going to be Yahawashai's headquarters. Our king, the Hawash, that's right. The same demons that are destroying the place right now, all the nations, they're going to go back and build it back better. According to Bible prophecy and according to the book of uh, Tobit, Jerusalem family, the streets are going to be paved with gold. That's why you're going to be able to see your reflection. And Yahweh Ratazah, we are among the numbers. Hmm? He says, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has claimed that, I just read that, it said the overwhelming majority of his citizens and, and that U.S. President Joe Biden was wrong to suggest that his actions in Gaza are hurting Israel. So guess what? That's why he's not listening to America. And America have no power because why? These people here, family, they've paid, they paid for all the Congress. Your senators, your, your congressmen, they all paid for. That's what money does. That's right, family. Your vote don't mean anything. People out there, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for Trump. I'm going to vote for this person. No, 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 family. They have the money. They control everything. That's how the Lord set it up. So, yeah, whatever America says, sorry, whatever they say, that's what America does. But that's what the Lord, Bible prophecy have to be fulfilled. Said the least of the flock will draw them out. And he's going to make their habitation desolate. Because family, if they are out there feeding the, 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 the refugees and all, they, that means they are going off. They have to be the wicked. They are. This is their lot in the movie. Every director, when they write a movie, family, there's a good guy and they are bad guys. Eh? The Lord is doing the same here. He's showing you who the wicked is. This is very simple. He says, with the death toll in IDF Gaza operation passing 31,000, Biden told MSNBC on Saturday that Netanyahu should pay more attention to the innocent lives being lost in the Palestinian enclave family. Don't even believe what uh, Biden is saying. They are all on end of family. They are all wicked. Eh? But family, the Bible has to be fulfilled. The Third World War is at the door. Biden went on to say that Netanyahu is hurting Israel more than he's helping Israel. Eh? And that a planned Israeli invasion of Rafa, a city in the south of the Strip, where more than a million Gazans have sought a refuge, will be a red line for Washington. I don't know exactly what the president meant, Netanyahu told German tabloid bid on Sunday, but if he meant that I am pursuing private policies against the wish of the majority of Israelis and that this is hurting the interests of Israel, then he's wrong on both counts. But family, you hear that? This is beautiful. Eh? A kingdom divided, the Lord says what? Well, cannot stand. Eh? It will come to a, a desolation. It will come to an end. 
and that's what we are witnessing but family let's play this video this is from uh, new york prepper i don't own this video this is just an update this is the update that he just brought out this afternoon okay we're gonna listen to him for a few minutes and then i think i have a precept do i have another one i think i have a precept and we're gonna wrap this up mm -hmm. let's go what's going on guys it's greg here aka ny prepper it is sunday march 10th 2024 and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now it is 16.55 Eastern Time here in the United States. And we have some major breaking news coming in from Russia. Apparently in St. Petersburg, there were multiple kabooms heard near the airport over there. And there's now a hangar on fire. And what you're looking at here is video footage from the St. Petersburg airport. And this is apparently uh, that hangar that caught fire. We don't know yet what happened here, if this was related to that travel warning that multiple Western countries put out saying that there were going to be some extremist attacks in Moscow. I don't know if this is related to that or if this is related to Ukraine, if this was a Ukrainian drone that hit one of the hangars, but here we have footage of apparently a hangar at the St. Petersburg airport in Russia. And uh, it is on fire, as you can see here. We also have US nuclear forces on high alert this afternoon. We have five Boeing E6B Mercury Takamo planes, these are the nuclear war command and control planes. They're responsible for communicating with our nuclear forces. They can issue launch orders to our ballistic missile submarines and also to our missiles in the silos. So these are critical for nuclear war. And you can see one, two, three, four, five of them. One is off the coast of California. One is over Louisiana right now. And what's interesting is we have three looping over Oklahoma City. I've never seen this before. Check this out. Three of them just looping over Oklahoma City. This is where their home base is. Tinker Air Force Base, that's their home base. So this is very concerning, very unusual. Five nuclear war command and control planes in the air on a Sunday afternoon that is extremely unusual guys normally on weekends you don't see too many of these in the air maybe one or two or three but to have five of them in the air on a sunday afternoon is pretty rare okay so something is going on and as you can see here we have this fire raging in saint petersburg russia at the airport and yesterday we had four nuclear war command and control planes in the air. So this weekend, our nuclear forces have been on high alert. And I reported the other day that the US apparently was seriously preparing for a Russian nuclear strike on Ukraine at the end of 2022. This was reported by CNN and they cited two senior Biden administration officials. They were concerned about a Russian tactical nuclear strike on Ukraine. And I want to remind you guys that Russia is going to be mobilizing 300,000 citizens no later than June the 1st of this year. Here we have a mobilization order that was signed by Sergei Shoigu. Okay, partial mobilization of 300,000 citizens no later than June the 1st. The order comes into force on March 25th. Okay, so over the next two months, Russia is going to try to create a big army that they're going to use to try to break through the Ukrainian lines and push all the way to Kiev, the capital, and all the way to Odessa, the main port city. And if they're able to do both of those things, then Ukraine is basically lost. And uh, Russia is going to basically control the entire country. If they control the capital and they control the main port city, then Ukraine is finished as a sovereign country. And that's why Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, clearly stated that if Russia breaks through the front lines and makes a march towards Kiev or Odessa, he's going to deploy French troops to stop them. 
And the Polish foreign minister said that some countries have already sent their troops to Ukraine. And he said, unlike other politicians, I will not list these countries. Okay, so he was referring to Germany when uh, Olaf Scholz, I believe it was, uh, leaked out the information that the British are in Ukraine and they're helping the Ukrainians to fire the storm shadow missiles at Russian targets. Okay, so the Polish foreign minister confirming that some countries have already sent their troops into Ukraine and he refused to specify which country sent them. And the Russian foreign ministry responded to the Polish foreign minister's statement and said, it is no longer possible to cover up the presence of NATO forces in Ukraine. And French President Emmanuel Macron allegedly said our special forces are ready for Putin at a meeting with the French parliament on Thursday. Wow, pretty strong statement there. France is apparently gathering an alliance of NATO countries to send troops to Ukraine in the near future. This was reported by Politico and Haiti has totally collapsed into a state of lawlessness. The prime minister of Haiti is no longer in the country and is sheltering in Puerto Rico. The ports are officially closed and there are cannibal gangs besieging the national palace in Port-au-Prince. That's the capital of Haiti. Cannibal gangs, guys. There is supposed to be an emergency meeting in Jamaica tomorrow with the U.S., the U.K., Canada, and some other NATO allies to discuss the situation in Haiti. Apparently, a Marine Corps security regiment is already on their way to Haiti right now to restore order. But basically, the whole country is in chaos. And someone tried to use a car to ram their way into the Chinese royal palace where Xi Jinping's main office and residence are located. The driver was arrested by guards. Check this video out, guys. So this guy tried to ram his car into the Chinese White House, essentially. And you, here you can see him being taken away by the guards. They're carrying him away. And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. All right, family. Just a quick one more article. Russian diplomat, this is from TAS, Russian news agency. Russian diplomat calls on NATO to stop denying presence of its military in Ukraine. It says here, Russian foreign ministry woman, spokeswoman Maria Zakharova, has said that there's no sense of there's no sense for NATO to deny the presence of its forces, its forces in Ukraine. No point in denying it any longer, she told a Vestia newspaper, commenting on Polish Foreign Minister Radosl. Radoslaw Sikorsky statement. Earlier, Sikorsky told a conference on the 25th of anniversary of Poland's NATO membership that the NATO military are already in Ukraine. He did not say, however, which country these troops are from. After a conference in Ukraine in Paris on February 26, Macron said that the participants had considered sending a ground troop to Ukraine. Although no consensus was reached on this topic, he left the door open to such a scenario in the future. After the conference, most of the participating countries stated that they have no plan to send troops to Ukraine to fight against Russia. Families are escalating, but let's go here. What was that? I think I had a precept here. Quick precept here, and we're going to wrap it up. It says Isaiah 66, 15, the king is coming. Family, that's how, this is how the king, Yahweh Shah, is making his entrance. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. He already told us, in, according to the book of... Um, Saint Saint Luke, uh, chapter uh, chapter twelve, verse uh, forty nine, he says he wished this place was on fire, and he's gonna get his wish. That's right, the king is gonna get his wish. It will be on fire before he shows up, because we're gonna need deliverance. Lord willing, we are among the numbers. For behold, the Lord Yahweh will come with a fire, and will come with fire, and with his chariot coming with thousands of thousands of thousands of chariots. Family, he so called them UFOs. Okay like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And for by fire and by what? By his sword and the lasers coming out of those chariots and brimstone family just to show his power. And will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. You go to the book of Isaiah. No, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, let's hit it quickly. Uh, let's go to, do I have it up? 
I don't have it up. But let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, is it Jeremiah? Yeah, Jeremiah 25. Actually, yeah, Jeremiah 25. Um, Jeremiah 25, 33. Jeremiah 25, 33. That's a quick precept here. Where is it? It says here. Mm -hmm. It says Jeremiah 23. And the slain of the Lord and the kill shall what? Shall be at that day, the day of the Lord's day. That's right. And from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, found there are going to be bodies everywhere. Eh? They shall not be lamented. Nobody's going to be out there crying for little Pookie or little Ray Ray, eh? Laquisha, whatever name they are. Family, no, nobody's going to be crying. Eh? Neither guarded. Nobody's going to be calling the funeral home. Oh, I have a body at this, this is so and so, so, so address. Can you come and pick it up and go bury it? No, no, no. Bodies are going to be everywhere. They're going to be fertilizer for the ground when it's all said and done. Eh? It's a neither guarded nor buried. They shall be what? Dung upon the ground. That is how the Lord, that's what the Lord is about to do on this planet here. Let's go back to Isaiah 66. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord play with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, those going to churches, that's why right, the Catholics, the praise, uh, well, uh, what is it called? Uh, plantation Christianity, eh? That's right. The hallowed houses and eh? the one that telling you to eat whatever your heart desire. The Lord says, oh, you can't, you, you, we are in grace period. So do whatever your heart desire. Let's hear what the Lord says. It's what the Lord is saying here. It's a day that sanctified themselves and purified themselves in the gardens and eh? behind one tree. The pastor says standing there and praising. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. After this, after the sermon, we're going to have some barbecue. And then you look at the barbecue. It's all type of abominable food on the grill. That's right. Let's hear what the Lord says. In the midst, eating swine flesh and the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together, says the Lord. So if anybody keeps telling you that, yeah, eat whatever your heart desire. That's why you continue to hold, hold on to that energy. When you repent, family, you do the best that you can in this vessel. Eh? That's why we're not going to get it perfect on this end. But once the Lord brings us in, eh, the things that we used to do family, we do the best to stop doing them. Especially like eating all this abominable food. We have a dietary laws. You see? The men of the Lord, we're telling you that do the best that you can. Don't play, don't gamble with your life. Especially the time that we're about to enter into. The king is coming. And you're going to need protection, especially the, during the time of Jacob's trouble. If you continue to live wickedly and not taking heed to this message, you're gonna the Lord is going to kill you. And not only just a regular kill, you're gonna family, you're gonna to be tortured. Hey, we gotta tell you. We're not gonna mince our word. Repent. Repent. That's why it says what? Act, Acts chapter. Actually, let me go there quickly and then we're wrapping this up. Let's go to the Act 319. Acts 3 now. What's the Lord says? It says what? Acts 3.19. Actually, no, let's do the blue letter so we can break it down. Let's go. And then we're going to wrap it up, family. Acts 3.19. The Lord says what? Family, we're about to go home, man. You don't want to don't wanna miss your Howard Shai's family. This is family, the biggest family reunion. Okay? The king is coming. And we're telling you, repent, repent. Act 3.19. Where is it? Let's go there. Let's go there. Act 3.19. Repent ye, therefore, and be what? Converted. That your sins may be blotted out. Your sins be blotted out. The sure mercies of David. When the times of refreshing shall come from what? The presence of the Lord. But let's read this in the what? In the NLT also. And we're going to go back and look up some words. Now repent of your sins and tend to the most high. So that your sins may be wiped away. And that's what we are doing. Family, that's what we are doing the best that we can. But let's look up some word here. Hmm? What is repent? The Greek word as well. Metanoia. Strong's G thirty three forty, metanoia, metanoia. To change one's mind, example to repent, to change one's mind for better. You hear that for better, heartily to amend with abhorrence of one's past sins. That's right. You can you, you before you came in here, you were doing all type of wickedness, sleeping with your neighbor's wife, stealing, lying, doing all type of eating all type of abominable food. 
Now the Lord brought you to this glorious gospel. You open your eyes. Family, mm -mm. you don't want to miss the family reunion. It is coming. Barakata Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Repent, repent, repent. And then, yeah, converted. Let's look up the word converted. What's the Greek word? Strong's G, 1994, Epistrefo. Epistrefo. Transitively. Transitively, family. I've never heard that one before. Let's look it up. It's what? A verb is accept one or more of it. For example, to enjoy. No. A sense of use of a verb. Able to take a direct object. Express. Between excessive. don't get it it says to 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 the uh, to the worship of the true power to cause to return to bring back to the love and to obedience of the Mosai, to the love for the children to love wisdom and righteousness to turn to oneself to turn oneself about turn back that's right we're going back to righteousness because we know laws and statutes were given to us and eh? We keep the laws to the best of our ability. And when we do go off, we ask for forgiveness. Like I said, we're never going to get it perfect on this end. And we don't use our grace period to continue to live in sin. We don't do that, family. Work on your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because if you fear the Lord, guess what? You're going to do the things to please him. If you don't fear the Lord, you're just going to yeah, you're gonna do whatever your heart desire, right? That's why it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. And knowledge and wisdom is going to be the stability of the time and what? The strength of our salvation. But what? But the fear of the Lord is his treasure. You see? That's what we're telling you. Family, Yahweh Shai is coming. Yahweh Shai is coming. Prepare your heart. You don't want to be left behind. The system is falling apart. America is finished. NATO, Russia is about to get it on. And like Marvin, I said Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Let, let's get it on. You see? It's coming. Third World War is coming. So... I will leave it there. I hope you were edified or praise, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, our heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son, our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai Shalom.